You're watching Talking Points, a focus on the political scene in Lubbock and across the South Plains. And welcome back. Here's a look at some of the political headlines of the past week or so. Lubbock County Commissioners have approved spending $10 million for a new medical examiner's facility. They'll next find someone to work out what they actually need and put together a cost. A commissioner, Jason Corley, told us their goal is to go back to doing in-house autopsies now. Commissioners also approved imposing a fee for bodies left in the morgue for more than five days. Starting the sixth day, a family or outside company will be charged $75 a day. Governor Abbott has appointed Dana Cooley as judge of the 132nd Judicial District in Borden County and Scurron County. Judge Cooley is the director of criminal justice and law studies program at Lubbock Christian and served as district attorney for that particular court district for over 18 years. And of course, this week was the one-year anniversary of the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. Lubbock Congressman Jody Arrington asked for his reflections on what happened and the political fallout from the riot. My biggest uh, concern was that peaceful protesters and people like me who were objecting uh, to the electoral college votes in certain states were being delegitimized by these uh, by these knuckleheads. And, um, but I will also tell you, I think it is the narrative around what happened uh, at the Capitol on January 6th has been by the mainstream media and the Democrats completely overblown and exaggerated and over-dramatized like no other event in modern history. Well, lawmakers are still investigating who actually did what that day. And as KMAX Anna Warnke reports, the chief of U.S. Capitol Police told senators this week security improvements have been made, but more work needs to be done. U.S. Capitol Police Chief Tom Manger says when an angry mob stormed the Capitol steps one year ago, his department wasn't ready. If January 6th taught us anything, it's that preparation matters. Chief Manger told senators on Wednesday that leading up to the attack, critical intelligence information was ignored, and the officers on duty that day didn't have the resources or backup they needed. If the intelligence had been acted on the way it should have been, um, and we would have had enough people here, um, I think it would have been a different story. Five Capitol Police officers who reported for duty on January 6th have since passed away. Including Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, who died the day after the attack. Four other officers died in the days and months that followed. Chief Manger says the department has since put together a contingency plan that involves better coordination between federal partners, the National Guard, and local law enforcement. I don't know who it's going to be or when it's going to be, but we will likely be tested again. Manger says the department is also working to hire more than 400 additional officers. I think it's going to take us um, at least two to three years to get up to our, our staffing. Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz says lawmakers are prepared to help out any way they can. Whether they are right wing, left wing, or they got no wings at all, if you assault a cop, you ought to go to jail for a long, long time. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke. Uh, Slayton is the latest West Texas city to enact an abortion ban similar to the one in Lubbock. As we wait for a Supreme Court ruling on this, we ask Governor Candidate Beto O'Rourke about the latest abortion fight and how it hits him politically. His answer begins part two of our recent interview for five more good minutes. This reproductive health care ban bill that Governor Abbott signed into law is the most extreme, the most cruel piece of legislation seen anywhere in America. Because as you know, it puts a $10,000 bounty on the head of any Texas woman seeking to make her own reproductive health care decisions. That bounty can be cashed in on by any American, doesn't even have to be a Texan. And it's happening in a state that is already at the epicenter of a maternal mortality crisis. Because as reproductive health centers, including in Lubbock, have closed down over the last 15 years, not only is it harder for a woman to access an abortion, it's harder to get a cervical cancer screening, to get family planning help, or to see any kind of provider at all. And it's risking the lives of the women in our lives and in our communities. So as governor, I would repeal that. I'd make sure that we're listening to one another because we have strongly, deeply held beliefs on both sides of this issue. And I respect people on both sides. It's a deal breaker for a lot of voters. What do you say to them, though? Is there an alternative you can give yeah. them for people who are worried about uh, women's health? It's interesting. So I, I, I'm born and raised 
Catholic. Um, my mom is the most devout Catholic you'll meet. And we, we disagree on this issue. Mm -hmm. And so when this comes up at the dinner table, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a passionate conversation. But one point upon which we can agree is that we want to do a better job in ensuring that we have better outcomes in Texas. We are the leader nationally in not just teen pregnancy, but repeat teen pregnancy. We're losing moms in this state at a faster rate than almost any other state. And for black moms, for black women in Texas, the rate is three times as bad as for white women. When I tell my mom that having access to reproductive health care keeps more people alive, allows them to make better decisions in her life, we find some common ground there. So I do think we need to listen to one another and we need to respect each other and we cannot be judging each other if we're going to be able to move forward. There is common ground to be had. We just have to look for it. College football kind of became a catalyst for some efforts to finally do away with the permanent university fund. Uh, here in, in Texas. It'll be brought, I know, by a bill with some lo local folks here in the next legislative session. The current governor is now openly sort of talking about using some of that money uh, for endowments for places like Texas Tech and to sort of build on those. What's your stance on, on the, the permanent university fund here and, and, and where that stands and where it needs to go? The permanent university fund derives its wealth from the land, mineral, and oil and gas resources here in West Texas. And all that wealth flows literally into the University of Texas and Texas A&M systems. And that's great. We really support those schools and the students and educators who are there. But some of that has to come back to West Texas and specifically to schools like Texas Tech. We want to make sure that there's a larger endowment to guarantee that more young people can attend these universities here and be competitive for the kinds of jobs that we want to create in Lubbock and West Texas. So I think that's the right direction to take. As governor, I would support that. A lot of people here are pretty passionate about uh, not having a vaccine mandate uh, in, in business and letting business owners sort of make their own decisions about the, all that. Um, that's sort of evolved as, as I guess the, the from a political standpoint, it's sort of evolved as the uh, what we know about the the, uh, the illness has evolved too. Where do you stand on vaccine mandates and whether or not businesses should be allowed to say, okay, if you're going to work here, you have to have a shot. Have a shot. Yeah. Let's trust those business owners. Let's trust their employees. If they want masks or proof of vaccine to keep their employees and customers safe, let's allow them to do it. It's unbelievable that the governor has interfered in private business decisions to prevent business owners from protecting the, the life and safety of those whom they serve and with those whom they, they work. Uh, same for our public schools and our Head Start program here in, in Lubbock. Um, the Republican Party used to be the party of local control. As Texans, let's get back to some local control and make sure that people can make the best decisions for their health and for the safety of those around them. You know, it, 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 and I know you've got to run, but we, we, we just come off an election where we saw 66-odd uh, percent of folks in Lubbock County vote for, for Donald Trump. Um, and they're going to look at you and they're going to remember a lot of things and, and see basically just the D that goes next to your name on when it lists out on the ballot. What do you tell those folks about why they should take a second look at you and where you stand for the state? I, I was just in Abernathy in Hale County earlier today and I was listening to a justice of the peace who happens to be a Democrat. I think the last Democrat elected in Hale County. And she said something to the effect of, while in other parts of the country they may see themselves as Republicans and Democrats, here in Hale County, um, here in Lubbock, I hope, we see each other as neighbors, as friends, as family members, as Texans before we were anything else. And I think when we get back to that point of view and get back to the big things like jobs, world-class schools, being able to see a doctor, and away from the culture war stuff and the extremism, we get back to doing the big things that Texans should expect of one another and their government. And as governor, I want to make sure that we get back to being big. That's who we are as Texans. And, and I know that that is uh, more important than party affiliation or any other difference between us. Can we get rid of a mandate on ties for TV <laughs> news people? He's got it right, and I think I've been doing it wrong this whole time. But O'Rourke, hey, safe travels. Thank you. And good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And coming up, are shortages in people and products because of the pandemic still costing you money? Lubbock County may have some money for you, and that's next on Talking Points.